Alright guys, welcome to the Ultimate Plate Discipline Guide. We are here playing the Yankees on Legend. We will play uh, we'll play as the away team so we can get an extra at-bat at the end. Uh, basically, what I want to go through today is, as much as possible, everything that we can get into about Plate Discipline. Why we do it, how you do it, and uh, just trying to progress and increase your skill in Plate Discipline as we go on. That's the first thing I wanted to mention, that I think play discipline is a skill. And I think that it's it's something that you can learn, you can develop. It's not just something that either you have it or you don't. And I think I'm an example of that. that um, I'd say the first like four or five years I played this game, just swung at everything. Because um, I could make contact and get hits and get home runs and everything. But I think this year is a little bit different in that it's a lot harder to get hard contact um, with these power hitters and everything. Um, so um, as we play the game, I'll get into some of the tips and exactly what to do as the game goes on, um, why we're doing it, and things like that. So right now this is on Legend. We're playing against CC Sabathia and the Yankees. And the first thing I want to do is go to my opponent's bullpen. So. Obviously, we know that the Yankees, you can't really see it there, but, okay, there we go. So right now, they're Chad Green closing. I don't know if that's actually true in real life, but anyway. Um, you take a look at their bullpen. They've got four guys that are 80 or above, so that's a decently solid bullpen on the back end, and a couple of decent guys at the top end as well. So that's usually the first thing I want to do um, when, when I'm talking about plate discipline, which is look at their bullpen and the reason being is that when you are, are taking a lot of pitches you're trying to get the starter out of the game especially so if he's a really good starter but you also want to make sure that the other person doesn't have a loaded bullpen which right now you might get some guys that are uh, have some weak bullpens like my bullpen right now we'll take a look at this is a pretty pretty weak bullpen for um, for online diamond dynasty but as we go on uh, the bullpens are gonna get pretty loaded um, so it's it's not as important later on but right now you want to know that if you're getting the starter out in the fifth inning then you're gonna have a tough bullpen to deal with or an easy bullpen to deal with which is why um, when I start playing this game I know that CC Sabathia is on the mound he's like a 72 overall and the bullpen's pretty good which means I'm not trying to force the starter out I'm trying to force him to make bad pitches and hit him rather than trying to get him out to face the bullpen in other cases, let's say you're facing the Mets or something, I don't know what their bullpen's like, I don't think it's very good, but you know that they've got a good starting rotation, and you want to try to force like Syndergaard out of the rotation, out of out of the game as soon as possible, and probably face their bullpen. Um, so that's really the first thing you want to do, you want to evaluate their pitching staff. And, all right, so that's a take. Um, next thing, like I said, it's a skill you can develop and um, it's it's something that pitchers aren't as good as you may think they are. Even at the higher levels, you know, maybe like five to maybe one percent of the pitchers are really, really good and can hit their spots all day, and uh, and they are going to beat you with their pitching. The rest of these people in online, they're just going to try to beat you at whatever issues you have with your own hitting and plate discipline, that's how they beat you. They don't beat you because they locate on the corners every single time. They beat you because you swung at the bad pitch that he knew you were going to swing at, so he threw it. So, when we're talking about plate discipline, we're talking about the fact that pitchers aren't going to be able to do what they want every single time. Um, so, so what you want to try to do is force them to make the bad pitch and not swing at their waste pitches. And right now, don't worry about what's going on in the game. I'm just kind of talking, and then as we go through the game, I'll show you exactly what what I'm trying to do. So, we're trying to have plate discipline, and of course, when you're having plate discipline, you want to uh, try to get those good pitches in the middle of the zone, so you're not swinging around all these corners or swinging at something off the plate, the pitcher's pitches. Um, so another thing that plate discipline helps you out with is when that starter gets what, gets tired, you're going to get like that 80 pitches point, and his breaking ball is going to stop snapping as much. 
and that really helps against uh, it's a good breaking ball pitchers um, and and it really limits them to what they can do and it, especially with wiping you out all right so the final thing that you want to do starting off a game is uh, to also scout your opponent which is kind of tough to do um, now that the show nation no longer has um, your like universal profile and other people's universal profiles out there which you used to be able to just search and you can see their tendencies and everything when that comes back which hopefully it does um, you'll be able to do that and as the game starts you want to be able to see what their strike percentage is what kind of contact and power they have um, some of the stuff on there isn't accurate but I think those couple things are how much they strike out um, how much they hit home runs <clears throat> their contact and, and pitching abilities. I think those parts are accurate, and you can see their ERA and batting average as well. So you do want to check those if possible. It's not right now, but later on, hopefully it will be once it's on the show nation. So let's talk about some of the tangible things that you can do uh, to increase your plate discipline and not just kind of the theory of why we want to do it. Of course, we said that we want to try to get pitches over the middle of the plate, hittable pitches in your strike zone. So let's say maybe you don't want this inside this middle of the plate, but you know this guy throws a lot of stuff inside. If you saw my previous video, um, this pitch right here is really hittable if you're sitting on it. So you may not be sitting in the middle of the plate, although it's the easiest thing to hit, but um, you want to be able to get your pitch, and working the count is how you do that. So being able to see where the pitch is going obviously is the fundamental part of of plate discipline that you want to see be able to track balls and strikes that really is just going to come down to practice getting your good uh, camera angle right now i'm using strike zone two um, but strike zone one is usually the go-to i might go back to it um, i usually don't use pci either i feel like it's very um, distracting although i do like this new dynamic pci that it's a lot less it's a lot more transparent um, but I don't use it when I'm playing, when I'm not streaming. So there we go, we got a couple runners on. We saw that I got a, a walk with Reese Hoskins. Um, and basically, um, you do want to take some early pitches in the count. That's just basic baseball. A lot of the stuff I'm going to say is basic baseball, but the way that you can implement it into your game is a lot, obviously a lot easier said than done. So that's what I'm going to try to give you some, some extra tips. So first of all, um, I don't want to swing at stuff that's right on the corner. So basically what I'm doing is I'm shrinking the zone when I have the advantage or when it's early in the count. So I don't want to move my PCI too much early in the count, but um, there we go. That was on the outside corner I was able to get to it. That was just uh, two strike hitting, not necessarily a product of discipline as much as it is plate coverage. And we can get into that to a later video. <coughs> So what I'm doing now is I see that I have a 1-0 count with one out. Um, Brian McCann, and I've got the pitcher up next. Yeah. Um, in this situation, I might not get as much to hit, um, especially online, uh, although it is a bases loaded situation, which makes it a little bit different. Usually if it's like second or third, you're going to get walked, so it doesn't really matter. But here, he is being very, uh, you know, wild a little bit. Could have swung at that but I, I obviously score a run if I get a walk. So either way, it's good. And I'm just looking for that pitch right there. And like I said, this is on legend. So if you can do this, you can hit anybody. Um, and, and really legend, they, they make it a little bit harder to have power, a little bit harder to make contact. Um, and the pitchers throw all over the place and the fastball comes a little bit hotter. But it is a little bit different than uh, playing online because they adapt. Uh, your your opponent's going to adapt a lot faster than the computer will. Um, and obviously, CC's not having a good day at all. He's about to walk the pitcher, and um, I didn't need to swing at that. I, w I wouldn't usually swing at that. I'd probably take the two strikes here if he was going to throw me two strikes. Um, 
but yeah, so so I didn't want to uh, play a uh, play a user so that I could pause and things throughout this stream, and in case like they quit by the second inning, um, that I have to restart and everything. And I wouldn't want to do that. All right, so like I said, you don't want to swing at these corner pitches early in the count, especially since this year these low pitches that's a bad pitch to swing at this right here that's a lot easier to pop things up and hit the ball on the ground uh, you don't want to do that so so if you're sitting down here that's okay but adjusting downwards like instead of actually getting down here a lot of times with a good fastball you're gonna only get that far with your PCI um, so so being able to try to use the, the middle of the zone in your mind so when I say shrink the zone what you're doing is in your mind I'm saying all right I see my PCI and I'm not really moving it much I'm gonna go here or here and I'm not gonna go all the way to anywhere else so that was kind of inside but you see that there is a little bit of a gap between where the ball lands and the corner which means it's definitely a hittable pitch I saw a breaking ball as soon as I saw it breaking I knew I didn't want to swing swing at that on a one and one count uh, but we'll see what happens here. That's a decent pitch to swing at. Um, <clears throat> I'm just not picking up the lefty well with Conforto, although I hit that grand slam with McCann. One and two count. Let's go to a contact swing. Two and two. Uh, let's see. He's been kind of wild, so I am going to go back to contact swing. Let's say if he's been throwing a lot of uh, strikes. That was pretty bad. Yeah, so I wasn't looking for a fastball in that last one, although I might have, probably should have, and Conforto's swing is a little bit loopy, so I have a hard time catching up to any kind of fastball, unless I'm anticipating it, um, but anyway, that was a bad strikeout. <clears throat> Alright, so, talked about shrinking the zone, trying to get something over the middle, um, not moving the PCI too much early in the count. Um, and just kind of sitting in one spot. It doesn't have to be down the middle, but it can be um, on a quadrant of the plate, just wherever you think he's going to pitch it. All right, so the next thing you can do, um, especially especially if you're facing a really good starter with a weak bullpen, or like if you see, like let's say, Andrew Miller in the bullpen, that's his go-to guy, or he has some, some uh, really tired bullpen guys that he just overused in the last couple games um, and you know that you can get to his bullpen and you're trying to get the starter out what you can do is just take until two strikes and I saw someone do this against me like three four years ago they, were, they took to two strikes for the entirety of the first time through the lineup so the first nine guys or like the first three innings or something like that he took the two strikes every single time and by the end of that by the end of those three innings, I probably had like 60 pitches thrown or something. Um, because you're going to throw at least five pitches, probably. You're going to average at least five pitches if you're just taking the two strikes. Because sometimes he's going to try to make you chase. Um, he's going to foul stuff off. So taking the two strikes can get you to that, that high pitch count very quickly. And honestly, when I do this, it's... My, my win percentage is like crazy high. It's probably in the 90s. It's probably honestly in the 90s. This is playing on um, probably probably in that range of trying to get from championship to World Series. Um, and it's just insane how well this works. Cause like, so I, I don't strike out too much. Um, as you saw, I struck out a couple times, but I'm kind of talking and I, I'm not focused. Um, but I don't strike out too much, especially on like all-star difficulty or Hall of Fame. Which is what uh, what rank seasons is on, so that kind of decreases my my pitch count actually. All right, so I don't strike out too much, and the reason is because I don't actually get deep into counts. So if you get deep into counts, you're going to strike out more, but that's okay. So so I'm actually thinking that striking out more for this year for me is what I'm going to try to try to do actually. So of course, when I'm at two strikes, I'm going to try to foul off a couple pitches, um, you know, get a base hit, but the point is to strike out more because it'll be a product of getting deeper into counts, and I think that's going to help me a lot. So when you get deep into counts, obviously you also have a chance to take walks, get on base, um, get better pitches. Right now, 
that first pitch was decent. This number three pitch was okay to hit. Right now I'm gonna use contact swing and see what happens. Again, I'm just like super late for whatever reason right now. Anyway, so we talked about now taking the two strikes and how that really helps get your pitch count up and it actually helps you wait for a good pitch. Um, it doesn't help as much, I'd say, in getting your pitch because you're probably gonna take two fastballs over the middle at some point in the at bat. Just the way that people pitch um, and make mistakes. So you're gonna end up giving up a lot of hittable pitches and end up um, just kind of swinging and missing bad pitches at the end of the at bat. That, might, that may happen to you. Um, and that's okay if you're trying to run the pitch count out. So if you don't want to do that, obviously you are trying to get runs. Like like I said against CC Sabathia, I'm not trying to get to their bullpen, I'm trying to hit him, right? So look at that, he's at 81 pitches in the fourth inning. So that's actually amazing. But I am trying to hit him. So what I want to do now is, sometimes I want to take the two strikes. Maybe I'll do that with someone that I'm not as confident hitting with. Or let's say if a lefty comes up and I'm, he has bad splits against uh, left-handed pitching. Then I want him to go to two strikes, foul some pitches off, just have a good at-bat. But then the next batter, maybe someone who's really good against lefties, like Ian Desmond's actually good. Um, this thing is messed up. But he's um, 86 and then like 80-something power or 70-something power against lefties. So when he comes up, maybe I'll just swing at the first pitch and try to get... You know, if he's he saw that I took the two strikes, let's say I've been taking the two strikes for like a couple innings, he sees that I'm just swinging at, uh, or, or not swinging at anything. Then I come back with a right handed hitter who's good against the lefty, and I swing at that first pitch, and maybe it's a meatball because he's trying to, he's just trying to get pitches over now that he knows that I'm not swinging. So that's really the next thing that you want to do. Alright, so CC got pitch hit for in the fourth inning. Let's talk about that for a second. We got him up to 80-something pitches. Um, game recap right now. Uh, is pitch count in here? No. Player stats, pitcher analysis. All right, so Sabathia threw 86 pitches in four innings. We got a homer off of him. We only had four hits and a lot of strikeouts, actually. Uh, let's see how many strikeouts I had. Strikeout. I had eight strikeouts on seven fastballs down the middle. Uh, that doesn't usually happen, but I'm just kind of talking at the same time. But So we may have thrown a lot of pitches. He's out of the game in four innings. Now we got to their bullpen, and because it's so early, they can't use the back end of their bullpen. Remember we saw at the beginning of the game, they've got a bunch of guys at the back end that are really good. Then we got a couple guys at the beginning who are hittable. And, and because we got them out so early, we're able to get to those guys that aren't as good um, early on. So that is something that you want to look into. If you can get them out of four innings, that's amazing. Especially if you only gave up four runs. That's not too bad. But he gave it up in four innings and 86 pitches. So that was the best part. All right, so what I was getting into at the end of that last inning is that you, you do want to make sure that you're keeping the pitcher guessing. So you took the two strikes, now he's looking for you, he's trying to get pitches over at the beginning of that bat, then you mix it up. You get to a guy that has good splits, and you jump on the first pitch. Um, and then maybe the next batter you go back to taking the two strikes. So you kind of mix it up, don't let him throw that fastball over the middle, um, and that's going to help you out a lot. Um, another thing I see people doing a lot is, and I, I've done this a lot as well, um, they will they will uh, take a lot of pitches in the first inning, they'll actually like walk two guys, and then maybe they'll hit into a double play or something, and then they, they lose confidence. And then after that, they swing at every single pitch the rest of the game. Um, and I'll end up with like a 50, per, 50 pitch complete game or something like that. And that just should never happen. So if you start out the game... Um, patient and the guy is walking you make sure he walks you the rest of the game too and don't let him off the hook um, and I've seen this like so many times like I've done it myself and it happens all the time so don't be that person who who swings stops starts swinging at everything very quickly all right another part of mixing it up is also trying to use 
um, different approaches for a different type of hitter. So let's say if you got a, or, or even the situation, so if you got a contact hitter, power hitter, speed hitter, um, like if you're if you're just trying to put the bat on the ball, and it doesn't matter how hard you hit the ball, for instance, for a for a, a contact slash speed hitter, it doesn't matter how hard you hit it because you're probably not going to hit a home run anyway. So you can try to work the count even more and more and more, and just like put the bat on the ball, hit a dribbler to third, and you'll probably get on base. The fact that you got like seven pitches out of that bat is huge. Yeah, I'm, I'm super late on all these pitches, even though it's a changeup. So when you mix it up, you can also mix it up between different hitters. That power hitter, maybe you take that first pitch and you try to deposit it in the left field seats. If you got that like meatball coming in, um, but you also you don't want to swing Zero. bad pitches like that. That's not necessary. You shouldn't be swinging that unless you're sitting on it. Um, right now, I just want to see if I can get a high pitch, making a mistake. That's actually a decent hittable pitch since it's a slider over the plate, and it's kind of moving away from you, uh, especially with a tall power hitter. <laughs> but now I'm at two strikes. I can I can try to use a contact swing, um, but he's also super powerful and can hit the ball through the infield. And I know he's going to try to throw something down, especially if this was uh, online. A lot of guys are going to try to get that ground ball. Um, that's a good pitch. Um, that's another thing. So when you when you when I was talking about striking out a lot. That's one pitch that you can try to concede sometimes. So if he's like throwing a lot of waste pitches and he happens to hit the corner like very nicely at some point, it's not bad to go down looking at that situation. Because it's going to open up, let's say, especially on 3-2 counts, let's say he hits the corner on a nice pitch. Um, it's unlikely that he's going to hit the corner on a nice pitch every single time. So maybe you struck out that one time, but the fact that you don't swing at it next time, you get two walks for the cost of one strikeout, you know what I mean? So you're kind of playing the long game, um, and kind of kind of playing the percentages, and um, just waiting over time to see what happens. So let's go back and take a look at what this guy's doing right now, because Adam Warren, I think he's in his third inning, he's thrown 25 pitches, and 72% of them have been strikes. But look at that, he's actually throwing pitches over the plate. So it's like, um, he's throwing seven pitches off the plate and three that have chased, two were kind of on the plate. 25 pitches, 10 of them were off the plate and it's only three of them. Um, <clears throat> so he is throwing some strikes, uh, which means I do want to try to start swinging earlier in the count. Um, and the fact that he's already in his third inning, I think that's a little bit too much for for a reliever telling me that I'm not being, I'm not having the right approach to this guy because he should be out of the game by now. So I'm gonna go swing early a little bit, a little bit earlier in the count, mix it up a little. Um, the pitcher's coming up next and I am gonna pinch hit for him. Uh, better swing, but that was a good pitch to hit. By the way, I don't know if I've really mentioned this much, but like I said, you're trying to get balls and strikes, right? You're trying to figure out what's a ball, what's a strike. And that really comes down to practice. It comes down to talent. Some people have it, some people don't. It is something you can work on, but it takes a little while. And it's really just a matter of playing games and, and really being conscious of it. So if you're able to just kind of naturally see what's a ball and a strike or practice, that's obviously going to be a big part of this. But really, it's, it's your approach that is the skill. Uh, the thing that's really uh, something you can develop and game plan for and like use your mind, your baseball IQ. Um, so one of the other things, now that they're starting to get their good pitchers in, what you can do is just eliminate parts of the plate, right? So look at this, he's throwing three pitches inside. Right now, I know he's a good pitcher and I'm looking inside somewhere. I'm gonna let the outside pitch go and I'm gonna look inside. 
Now, on two strikes, obviously I have to fall over the plate, and I have to really, I'm gonna have to adjust and try to, and try to foul that one off. Earlier in the count, of course, um, I'm gonna try to stay on that inside, fool me with a changeup. But so let's do this again. So I'm gonna look inside. I know he's a good pitcher. Um, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look outside because I know he's got his cutter, and if he throws his cutter on the inside, he's probably gonna break my bat. So I'm going to look outside, and I do this a lot with cutter guys, especially Dylan Betances. He always wastes me. So I've started looking on the outside half against these cutter guys. And that's really just eliminating half the zone. You can look up or down. You can look away. And really, um, if I wasn't talking, I probably would have hit that for a home run. But looking for that outside pitch, I know that ball is going to just kind of tail. If he, if he throws it on the outside, it's going to either be where I'm looking, or it's gonna fall over the middle of the plate where I can adjust to it and probably get a really good swing on it. So when you're looking at half of the plate, um, see that's on the inside. If I had tried to adjust from the outside to the inside, maybe it wouldn't have worked out as well. And if it had been a cutter and I had been looking inside, that would have busted me. But the other thing is when you're looking on the outside half or one of the, one of the halves up or down, in or out, you're also able to really see what's going to be a strike or not. So you're going to be able to tell if you're staring on this outside hat, you're going to be able to see whether it's a ball or a strike much easier than if you're trying to go from the center to the outside. And um, so we'll see, we're, we're going to sit outside, actually we'll go inside it this time. So if you're conceding a part of the plate, um, that's going to help you get uh, some more hits on one side of the plate, but you're going to give up some stuff on the other, other side. And really, you just want to concede when you know you have a weakness or you know the other person has a strength, a pitcher is really good or something, um, you're going to have to concede something. That allows you, when he makes a mistake or when he throws something just where you're looking for it, then you're going to be able to turn on it and make something happen with it. That's a couple of good pitches. In the spot I wasn't looking at. Um, a lot of people will like to throw up and in the fastball to strike you out. Not necessarily the CPU, but online, that's going to happen a lot. So I always, I'm ready to go up here, um, and I get a lot of home runs off of that pitch. <clears throat> and so the better the pitcher is, and we're, prob we're probably going to see like Chapman or Batances, the better the pitcher is, the more you're going to have to concede. So let's say when you're facing Chapman, you know he's got three pitches, fastball, slider, changeup, and he's got that crazy fast fastball, probably 102 in this game, and you know that you probably can't hit all of them. So what you really want to do is try to sit on one of them. Let's say I'm, I'm going to say I'm only going to swing at the fastball inside and up because that's probably where he's going to throw it a lot of the times. If he throws a changeup, before two strikes, that's fine. I'm not going to swing at it even if it's, you know, kind of hanging around somewhere down here. That's not what I'm looking for, and I'm going to concede it. Because I know he is 100% going to throw a fastball up and in, which is when I'm going to be ready, and I'm going to hit it. So the better they are, the more you have to concede. Um, and really, you're just trying to, to get your pitch. That's what play discipline is really all about. The last thing I really want to get into is being able to use the whole field. You saw, let's see, that's deep enough. I don't think so. Good catch. But you saw my last home run with Hoskins. I hit it the other way. And some of the power hitters, obviously, you can hit the other way. But for the most part, it's not like 17 where you could hit, you know, uh, with 60 power, you could hit opposite field home runs all day. This year, you, you got to really have 80 to 90 power if you're going to hit opposite field power, but that doesn't mean you can't hit to the opposite field. So if you're looking to use the whole field, that actually allows you to see the ball a lot longer. And that's, you know, I was really late on um, a lot of those fastballs I struck out on, but that's because I was waiting to see where the ball was going and trying to take it to the right field. I haven't played on Legend in a while, so I'm just kind of late on everything, but... Uh, let's see, we'll go with 
some of his lefties. Yeah, I just haven't played on Legend in a while, and I'm behind the fastball, so trying to use the whole field, trying to hit to right field, trying to get base hits. So, so we're not trying to hit power, hit for power to the opposite field. We're trying to get base hits to right field, just like that. Um, the more you're able to use the whole field, the more you're you're able to see the fastball for a longer period of time. The more you're able to adjust to other pitches. So if you're trying to take a fastball to right field, you're able to pull a changeup. You're able to pull a breaking ball or something off speed, um, and really it opens up the entire field for you. And finally. What we can say is that you can't try to hit home runs on every pitch this time around. <clears throat> Last year you could take this pitch, you could hit it for a home run, you could pull this pitch for a home run, that pitch for a home run. And the thing is you could you could adjust from the center of the plate from here, you could adjust from here to here and still slice a home run down the left field line, right? That is not the case this year with the new hitting engine for the most part. Um, in some situations if you're really quick or if you're like let's say I was only looking low and in but I also want to hit the middle pitch uh, maybe you can adjust really quickly but if you're trying to like cover the whole plate it's not gonna work out for you very well um, in the long haul from time to time you'll be able to get hits you'll be able to hit home runs and you'll say okay now that I did it one time I can do it anytime but that's just not the case this game has really balanced itself out and you will not be able to do what you did last year so being able to be disciplined, waiting for your pitch, I'm just looking for something down the middle. Um, but I wasn't able to capitalize on bases loaded. But the fact that I got the bases loaded is a good sign. Alright, so I think that's for the most part really what I wanted to talk about. Um, so we talked about developing the skill, taking the two strikes, mixing it up, um, really practicing on your own and trying to just develop your, your uh, vision. Um, and by the way, playing Challenge of the Week has really helped me, um, especially with plate vision, not necessarily discipline, but avoiding strikeouts, um, putting the bat on the ball with two strikes. That has been huge. And now let's just talk about this for a sec. Alright, it's a 7-3 to three game. We're playing on Legend, um, and he's been throwing pitches in and out. Um, the pitchers haven't been as good. It was CC Sabathia to start, but their bullpen's decent. Um, the fact that I have seven runs and struck out as many times as I did on a really bad strikeouts really shows you how effective plate discipline is because I've been you know distracted I've been talking the whole time uh, which I'm not used to just yet but with that distraction with striking out as many times as I have which is how many times uh, let's see all their pitchers there's strikeouts 14 strikeouts look at all those pitches down the middle um, and that still allowed me to have seven runs um, and it's on legend of course <laughs> there's 15 strikeouts um, they're not going to throw as many fastballs down the middle when you're playing online but it's just a good demonstration of exactly what's going on we got we got cc sabathia out of the game after four innings um, a couple innings where we had timely home runs uh, using the whole field uh, mixing it up not just taking two strikes every single time or swinging at the first pitch every time what I'm probably going to do is make a, a long version of this video and a short version let's see if we can get this ball nice alright so we'll make a long and a short version of this video and um try to get some of those condensed tips in there because there's a lot like random stuff that kind of went on a lot of strikeouts that I didn't want to show but um, for the longer version you'll see how the gameplay actually worked out um, and the shorter version we'll just kind of have the clips in there um, for the actual tips and what you can actually do and what I'll do is I'll also play a game on, on ranked seasons and kind of mesh it in with this video somehow either a second video um, but I'll use the same tips that I had here, condense them, put them in an online game because uh, it'll be easier to see like really what happens with an online game. So I'm going to get into that right now actually, and we'll see what happens. So if this video helped you out, make sure you drop a like, 
drop a subscribe. Um, check out some of the other videos. I have a little basic video on zone hitting. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, we're just trying to improve discipline and trying to get your pitch is the most important part. And I, I really like 18 compared to 17. Just it's, it feels a lot more like baseball. You really have to have your IQ down. You have to be able to implement a game plan. You can't just swing at everything once you get to the high levels. And I really like that about 18. So um, I, I don't know if this is going to be like my final version of a video or if I'm going to maybe, maybe do one later on as I kind of get more used to this game because I've been switching back between 17 and 18. I might, might do one later on just to adjust it. But in the meantime, hopefully this is helpful and, and um, I'll see you pretty soon. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. If you want to see something new or have a specific part of the game you want help with, be sure to leave a comment and we'll all try to help.